You're kidding me, right? Brielle's words dripped with contempt. Like Mom's measly salary even makes a dent compared to what you bring in, Dad. I froze in the hallway, clutching the bouquet of roses I'd brought home to surprise Dane on our tenth anniversary. Their voices carried clearly from the living room. Dane chuckled. You've got a point there, princess. Your step-monster is just a worker bee while I'm the one bringing home the real money. A worker bee? The insult stabbed deep, far more painful than his nickname for me. I thought we were partners, a team. Don't be too hard on Alara, he continued in a placating tone. Her little paycheck helps keep us afloat while my business gets off the ground. Anger burned away my shock. How dare he diminish my role as VP of Operations at Rainatech, one of the largest tech firms in the nation? I navigated millions in contracts and oversaw thousands of employees to keep the company running smoothly. His imported knick-knack business was little more than an expensive hobby that drained my income caring for his whims. Oh, please, like we'd ever go under without her. Brielle's nasal laughter grated my nerves. She's so easy to manipulate into giving you whatever you want— Daddy's lecherous little sugar mama. The cruel jab about my age combined with the insinuation that I was some sort of desperate cougar preying on younger men made me ill. When we married five years ago, I thought my husband and stepdaughter cared for me. Clearly, I'd been deluded. Don't sell her too short, babe. Dane's voice dropped to bedroom level. The smarmy tone that usually made my toes curl now left me revulsed. Her stock options and retirement fund are going to make one hell of a payoff when I finally divorce her broke ass. The roses slipped from my numb fingers as the full scope of his deception crystallized. He'd been using me from the start as a meal ticket, marrying me for my money, stringing me along until he could bleed me dry, all while parading his pretty daughter as a patsy to trick me into complacence. I stood there, Grief and rage churning through me like a hurricane until I felt strangely calm, serene, even. This was the wake-up call I needed to stop deluding myself about my marriage and drive me to build the life I truly deserved. One without a husband who viewed me as nothing more than a means to an end or a stepdaughter who helped him orchestrate that betrayal. Gathering the scattered petals, I headed to my home office and transferred the maximum allowance from our joint accounts into a new, separate one he couldn't access. It was a start to disentangling myself from Dane's deceit, the first step in taking back control. The feelings of hurt may linger, but they also lit a fresh determination within me. If Dane wanted to view me as a worker bee instead of an equal partner, that was fine by me. However, this worker bee was going to sting back harder than he ever expected. Five years earlier, I was optimistic about my future with Dane. A charismatic small business owner, he charmed me with his ambition and family values. His daughter Brielle was warm and welcoming too, embracing me as the mother she'd always wanted. Little did I know it was all a mirage concealing their true selfish natures. Thank you for this amazing opportunity, Dane murmured, arms wrapped around me on our honeymoon cruise. With your support, I can finally turn my business into a success. His words stroked my ego even as his hands roamed underneath my sundress. I was blinded by his flattery and his talents between the sheets. When we returned home, reality set in. Dane's imported furniture business was little more than a garage overflowing with dust-covered Asian knickknacks he tried peddling on eBay and at flea markets. The few grand I invested on the premise of jumpstarting his entrepreneurial dreams vanished into tchotchkes and overdue utility bills. Brielle, I'm so glad you'll be attending community college, I told my stepdaughter over a family dinner I'd prepared. Your dad and I can help with expenses so you don't acquire too much debt. Don't worry, Mom, she replied with that familiar gleam. I've got academic scholarships covering everything. Lie. Turned out her scholarships were actually thousands in secret loans she and Dane conspired to take out in my name, loans they never intended to repay. It's an investment in our family's future success, Dane purred whenever I protested his constant money pit schemes, another deception to bleed me dry under the guise of building something meaningful. While Brielle belittled my job in tech as playing office manager, whenever I arrived home from overseeing multi-million dollar contract negotiations, and managing thousands of employees across the globe. As the years passed, 
the cracks in their facade grew bigger until it all came crashing down that fateful night. Brielle's vitriol and Dane's greed were finally laid bare, revealing them as the toxic parasites they truly were. Parasites who had been feasting on my income, my generosity, my vulnerability from the very start while giving me nothing but lies in return. Now it was time for the host to fight back. Happy anniversary, babe, Dane purred, presenting me with a tacky, heart-shaped locket when I walked through the door that evening. Just a little token to show how much I appreciate your hard work providing for this family. I smashed it against the wall without a word. Alara, what the hell? He sputtered as I grabbed a fistful of his shirts and shoved him back. I know everything, I snarled, letting years of anger flow out. The loans, your business bankruptcy, that whore you've been sticking it to on the side, most of all, your sick plan to drain every penny from me before discarding me like garbage. Brielle came running in, eyes wild. Dad, what's going on? Nothing, princess. Dane tried to diffuse the situation with his typical placating tone. Your stepmom's just blowing things out of proportion again. I cut him off by cold cocking him in the jaw. Get out, both of you. Your free ride ends now, you leeches. Whatever other protests Dane prepared died as he crumpled to the floor, da cradling his face and staring up at me with fear for the first time. After years of profiting from my gullibility to his lies and manipulation, he finally saw the strong, determined woman he'd underestimated all along. After exposing Dane and Brielle's betrayal, my career ascended rapidly, while my personal life descended into chaos. Fueled by rage and a newfound determination, I threw myself into work as a refuge from the turmoil at home. My performance excelled so impressively that within two years, I was promoted to vice president of operations at Rainatech. The prestigious role came with a prestigious salary, penthouse apartment, and coveted corner office overseeing thousands of employees across our corporate campuses. Meanwhile, Dane responded to my demands for divorce by digging in his heels and contesting everything from property divisions to custody of Brielle. He even made a play for my retirement assets and stock options, claiming he was entitled to them after being my supportive husband all these years. Are you freaking kidding me? I slammed my palms on the table during one mediation session, making our attorneys jump. You cheated on me, lied to me, stole from me. You don't get rewarded for that level of deception and betrayal. Dane merely shrugged, preserving his infuriatingly calm facade. I put up with your obsession with work all these years, letting you prioritize your career over our family and marriage. I deserve compensation. The arrogance of his words stunned me into simmering silence, giving Brielle the opening she'd been waiting for. That's right, she chimed in with her best hand-on-hip valley girl sneer. While Mom's been galloping across the world, playing executive and raking in the big bucks, Dad's the one who kept our household running— he changed my diapers, kissed my boo-boos, worked his ass off. I tried and failed to keep my expression neutral as unwelcome memories of Dane's constant demands for new cars, expensive home renovations, and frivolous luxuries paraded through my mind. Demands he reinforced by having Brielle flutter her doe eyes at me, insisting Daddy worked so hard for us whenever I expressed hesitation over the budget. That girl played me like a fiddle using my desire for an earnest father-daughter relationship. Through it all, Dane smugly reminded me how lucky I was to have a supporting husband who allowed me to work, instead of being a traditional housewife and mother, as if his terms for our marriage included serving as his personal factory while he and Brielle plundered my paychecks. The mediation ended in inevitable deadlock. Back in my office afterward, I stared through the glass walls at my domain, the busy employees, the high-tech infrastructure, the piles of lucrative contracts paving the path of the company's future. Everything I'd sacrificed for, everything I'd achieved through grit and perseverance. Letting out a slow breath, the tension seeped from my shoulders. I refused to let Dane take this from me, too. Reaching into my desk drawer, I retrieved a plate Brielle had made for me in ceramics class when I first married her father. The sloppy red handprints and scrawled I love my new mom covered in garish paint and glitter— Another heartstring to be tugged whenever she or Dane wanted me to acquiesce to their latest frivolous demand. Not anymore. I reared back and hurled it towards the far wall, watching in grim satisfaction as it exploded in a shower of shattered clay. 
the symbolism was as cathartic as it was definitive. I discarded that naive version of myself. No longer would I be manipulated, drained, or disrespected. From now on, I fought only for me. And starting with this divorce, I wouldn't stop until I recovered everything Dane and his ungrateful spawn tried to take. This is your last chance, Alara. Dane jabbed his finger on the table between us. Invest in my new business venture, or I'll take you for everything you've got in this divorce. I scoffed at the desperation leaking through his bravado. Let's get one thing straight. You don't make demands of me anymore. Brielle slouched against the kitchen counter, buffing her nails with studied nonchalance. Come on, Mom. Help a struggling single father get back on his feet. The mocking lilt in her voice ignited my fury. Don't you mom me, you deceptive little witch. I turned my glare to Dane. And you, if you think you have any claim over my assets after your lies and infidelity, you're delusional. Dane's mask of control slipped, his eyes going wide. What are you talking about? I tossed a thick manila envelope onto the table, photos spilling out of his sweaty, shirtless form, entering a cheap motel room with his scantily clad mistress. I have evidence of your affair going back years, you cheating bastard. And that's just the warm-up. No. Those photos, they're— He trailed off as I produced bank statements and tax forms, exposing his business finances were a total sham, documenting his shady efforts to divert funds into shell corporations and offshore accounts. That's called tax evasion, fraud, theft of my marital assets. I picked up one of the photos, feeling a twisted sense of gratification watching him shrink underneath my contemptuous scrutiny. But what's really going to clean you out is the evidence I collected of you and your dear daughter conspiring to take out illegal loans and lines of credit in my name without authorization. The blood drained from Brielle's face, leaving her complexion as muddy as the lies and deceit she once spouted at me with such cavalier glee. She opened her mouth, but I cut her self-entitled wine off. Save it. I'm bringing all of this to the IRS and the authorities. You and your dad will be lucky if you avoid jail time by liquidating every penny you stole from me. Heavy silence hung between us as the gravity of my ultimatum sank in. For years, Dane had controlled me through manipulation, while Brielle reinforced that abuse with her snide comments and underhanded tactics, all to bleed me dry financially and emotionally. Well, now the power balance had shifted permanently in my favor. In my hands rested the power to destroy everything they valued most, their freedom, reputations, and ill-gotten wealth. Finally, I'd regained control over my life and finances, and they had nowhere left to go except face the consequences. Dane's mouth worked uselessly, all his usual smooth-talking bravado failing him. At last, he seemed to grasp the depth of his betrayal and how violently it was about to detonate across his world. You... You can't do this, he stammered, voice barely above a croak. We, we're family. I rose from my chair, glaring down at the pathetic shell of the man who'd deceived me for so long, feeding off my love and affection like a remorseless parasite. No, we're not family, not anymore. I pulled off my wedding ring and dropped it amidst the scattered evidence, the clatter of metal striking wood sounding like a judge's gavel to me. You took care of seeing to that when you crossed me for the last time. Brielle's face crumpled like she might cry, but I felt no pity for the crocodile tears. Not after witnessing how deeply her selfishness and greed ran. Without a backwards glance, I turned and walked out of the kitchen, leaving Dane and Brielle frozen in tableau at the ashes of the lives they'd foolishly burnt to the ground through their insatiable avarice. It was their turn to learn how destructive the flames of betrayal could be. You're really going through with this? Diane, my executive assistant, watched with raised eyebrows as I packed up the last of my personal items from my corner office. I nodded, securing the taped box holding framed photos of better times, myself beaming proudly at my graduation from Stanford, the company holiday party where I received VP promotion. That fateful day, I'd married the lying snake known as Dane Benson. I need a fresh start, I replied, tamping down the flicker of wistfulness. Some distance to regain perspective after. After your slime of a soon-to-be ex-husband conned you out of millions and broke your heart, Diane supplied bluntly. Despite her brusque manner, I appreciated her continued loyalty. I allowed myself a grim chuckle at her colorful description. 
Something like that. Let's just say I had my eyes open to who Dane and Brielle truly are beneath their facades. Speaking their names aloud lanced through me with a pungent mixture of anger and lingering hurt. For so long, I'd been blinded by Dane's charming manipulation and Brielle's fake deference, to the point I overlooked the insidious reality festering underneath. Now, having purged them from my life, I could begin healing, first by removing every lingering remnant of their negative influence over my environment. As if reading my mind, Diane plopped a small gift bag on my desk. I took the liberty of handling that for you already. I raised an eyebrow quizzically and pulled out the tattered scraps of Brielle's old macaroni frame, the words, I love my new mom, rendered unintelligible amidst the shattered detritus. You kept this monstrosity? I couldn't keep the disbelief from my voice. Diane shrugged. At the time, you cherished that ugly-ass thing as a treasured gift from your new stepdaughter. I assumed you might want to take a sledgehammer to it yourself as payback once you saw through their bullshit. Tevi would have my hide, I chided, naming the company's head of security who closely monitored the controlled entrances and exits to the executive offices to safeguard privacy. Still, I couldn't deny the visceral sense of release bawling the broken frame's remains in my fist prompted. I dropped it into the waste bin beside my desk with finality. There. Dane and Brielle's last lingering presence in my life is officially exercised. The words cemented the reality of the situation— I was free. Turning away from that troubled period of deception and heartache, I faced the floor-to-ceiling window showcasing my dominion. The orderly ranks of workstations and bustling employees maintaining our global tech operations. My kingdom of achievement, built through merits, and done the ethical way, a stark contrast to Dane's parasitic tactics. Voices outside drew my attention to the sprawling, manicured lawns bordered by fountains and contemporary sculpture displaying our corporate brand. A poignant reminder of how far I'd ascended through grit and determination to become the powerful business leader I was today. All on my own before I'd fallen under the sway of Dane's delusions and betrayals. Clearly, a return to those roots of self-accountability was needed. Alara, I blinked pulled from my reverie by Diane's inquisitive prompting. She held out an envelope emblazoned with the company logo. Your updated compensation and benefits package for the new fiscal year, she stated, ever the pragmatist amidst the swirling personal chaos. Along with the deed for that cute little bungalow you admired downtown that just went into foreclosure. I accepted the weighty envelope, unable to hide my surprise at the bonuses and perks so lavishly increased from last year's offering, no doubt a calculated move by our chairman to incentivize me retaining my leadership role amidst the turmoil dissolution of my marriage. I thank you, Diane. I'll review these and get back to you on next steps. I sealed the envelope and tucked it into my briefcase alongside the box of personal mementos. The sentimental relics of the life I'd lost merited preservation, even if the associated emotional ties eventually faded. My professional assets and accomplishments, however, were mine alone to build upon moving forward into this new chapter. Head held high, I steeled my spine and followed Diane from the office, leaving the heavy penumbra of the past behind for good. My name was Alara Benson, a woman reborn in the brilliance of her own independence. I'm entitled to half of everything. Dane jabbed his finger on the interrogation room table between us. Her income, assets, retirement accounts, the whole nine yards. My divorce attorney suppressed an eye roll. On what grounds? Your client engaged in infidelity, financial misdeeds, and identity fraud against Mrs. Benson. Alleged. Brielle's shrill objection cut through the air. She sat beside her father, arms crossed defiantly. And even if Dad made some mistakes, I'm an innocent party. I deserve my cut, too, after everything Alara put me through with her workaholism and abandonment. Brad leveled his gaze at the curvy blonde, utterly unimpressed. You're twenty-three, not a child and the evidence clearly shows your culpability in defrauding your stepmother. So what? She sneered. Your bitch client should have paid more attention to her family instead of chasing money and status like an obsessive sociopath. I'm the real victim here for having such a shitty maternal figure. Brad opened his mouth to retort, but I cut him off with a brisk hand wave. I'd listened to enough of these two leeches' manipulative bullshit for one lifetime. You're right, Brielle, I did fail as a wife and stepmother— 
by marrying frauds like you and enabling your greed for far too long. I pivoted my stare to Dane. But now? You'll get nothing except cellmates and scatoli jobs while I systematically dismantle every facet of the sham life you conned me into. Brielle recoiled like I'd slapped her, but Dane's poker face remained infuriatingly intact. You talk a big game, Alara, but are you really willing to go that far in open court? Air all our dirty laundry for public consumption? An undisguised taunt. He knew how much I valued privacy and discretion, an apprehension he and his serpent seed daughter leveraged often to keep me compliant. Well, no more. I slid a thick manila envelope across the table. Open it. Brow furrowing, Dane cracked the seal and upended the contents. Photos of him in flagrante delicto with his barely legal mistress at seedy motels, spreadsheets detailing his business insolvency and fund diversions into offshore tax havens, even webcam screenshots of Brielle applying for loans and lines of credit in my name without consent. In short, an exhaustively detailed evidentiary portfolio exposing every lie and deception they'd woven into our marriage from the very beginning. Dane stared at the incriminating evidence with the same slack-jawed shock as watching a bomb detonating in his face. Brielle fared worse, color draining from her cheeks until she resembled a hollowed-out husk. Where? How did you? Dane's voice cracked like a schoolboy's. Let's just say I have informants in low places who were all too happy to comply once I made certain overtures. I delivered the sordid details with crisp professionalism. Every mistress you Venmoed hush money, every bartender who witnessed your barfine babies parade home with you, every corrupt banker greasing their own pockets off our family's accounts. Swallowing hard, Dane rallied with a glare. You're bluffing. You'll be shanked or worse if you take this to the feds without protection payments. I couldn't resist the opportunity to twist the blade. You mean like how you and Brielle kept leveraging Coach Preston's gambling debts to coerce free tuition at Amherst for your little princess? Or blackmailing Mrs. Studebaker to change my Boy Scouts A- to a perfect score? The way Brielle paled until her skin assumed a clammy, greenish pallor would have been comical if it didn't fill me with such disgust. You. You bitch. How dare? Brad cleared his throat with a pointed look my way. Right time to wrap this reunion up and get back to business. I stared the two filthy defrauders down with withering contempt. I always suspected you were a grasping, venal pair of scum, even if I denied it for too damn long. Well, no more. This nagging guilt over sundering our family evaporated permanently once I realized there was never anything genuine for me to preserve. Dane opened his mouth to interject, but I steamrolled over him. You just made your last mistake by underestimating me for the final time. I'm through being the pawn in your pathetic little Ponzi scheme. I stood abruptly and smoothed my skirt. From now on, I go full scorched earth on you both and every avenue of your slimy little rackets until this divorce awards me every asset you tried swindling from me. Maybe then I'll have adequately repaid the years you gleefully bled me dry under the guise of being husband and wife. With that parting salvo, I spun on my heel and strode out, Brad hustling to catch up while Dane and Brielle's sputtered protests receded behind us. They thought their feigned victimhood routine would keep me cowed and compliant. But the gloves were officially off. It was time they felt the sting of the fury they'd roused from her slumber. With the damning evidence compiled, I activated the final phase of my retaliation against Dane and Brielle. No more appeasing or negotiating— only the total obliteration they so richly deserved. I started by forwarding the entire dossier on Dane's infidelity, financial crimes, and general depravity to his family and closest friends. The resulting social pariah status and ostracization from his circles rendered his usual bravado and charm utterly impotent for the first time in his weaselly life. Q. Dane inundating me with groveling voicemails and texts, promising restitution if only I'd take him back and make the hurtful untruths go away. As if his pleas could undo the brutal violation of trust he'd enacted against me for over a decade of marriage. My silence was his resounding answer. Meanwhile, I slipped a few extra indecencies into the IRS case file, such as his underreported income from illegal gambling rackets and money laundering through his sham import business. 
sufficient cause for them to not only audit and dismantle his remaining assets but secure federal charges that put him behind bars unless he complied. This is unconscionable, Dane's attorney blustered during our next mediation session. You can't just make unsubstantiated criminal accusations as a pressure tactic. I shrugged, the portrait of disinterested innocence. I had reams of evidence implying Mr. Benson engaged in financial improprieties. I simply passed it along to the relevant authorities to investigate as appropriate, just as any concerned citizen should. Brad suppressed a smirk while Dane's lawyer sputtered. My ex looking utterly gray and hollowed out in the face of seeing his house of lies come tumbling down through my machinations. As for Brielle, I reserved some special humiliation just for the faithful little sidekick who did daddy's dirty work with such smug superiority over me. A few screenshots forwarded to her elite private college's athletic department revealed how she conspired with Nike reps to receive free apparel and travel perks as an influencer. A violation of NCAA bylaws that, combined with exposing the fraudulent loans taken out for her tuition, saw Brielle expelled and stripped of her scholarship and diploma before she could even complete sophomore year. When she came storming to my penthouse in a froth, I almost pitied her, if not for the acidic tongue-lashing she unleashed upon me with volleys of money-grubbing whore and spiteful divorcee cunt that banished any last shred of sympathy. I endured her tantrum in stony silence until she wound down to catch her breath. Feeling better after venting, Brielle? My cool tone infuriated her further. Good, because that was your final chance to flay me with juvenile insults and baseless indignation. I pressed a button on my desk that triggered security footage to play on the widescreen TV, capturing the moment Dane and Brielle conspired to take out those fraudulent loans in my name. Their panicked expressions turned to slack-jawed horror as the recording progressed through ever more damning instances of their deceit and larceny caught on film. You, you crafty bitch! Brielle's eyes were twin pools of venom that brought me deep satisfaction. This is all doctored crap designed to ruin us. You'd think that, given how readily you tried doing the same to me. I held her glare steadily. I simply learned from the Master Grifter's playbook and took the shenanigans to their natural culmination. Rising from my chair, I approached until we stood nearly nose to nose, my heels giving me the slightest height advantage. Maybe next lifetime you'll appreciate real family instead of the materialistic sham you tried trapping me in. I pray you and your father receive appropriate rehabilitation behind bars to overcome these toxic delusions. You, you won't get away with this, you senile. Whatever other invective she intended died as I slapped her full across the mouth. Not hard enough to seriously injure, but enough to sting and shock her into mute, open-mouthed stupefaction. Get out of my home and life. Forever. I bit out each word succinctly before turning away. This chapter is over. The distinct patter of Brielle's heels fleeing the apartment marked her exit. I allowed my rigid posture to finally relax as euphoria washed over me. It was done. I'd vanquished them both at last. Settling onto my plush sofa, I poured myself a hearty snifter of brandy to savor the long-awaited triumph. Soon their sentencing and asset forfeiture would render them as inconsequential as last night's trash taken to the curb, leaving me to enjoy my new life in peace and satisfaction. A fresh start awaited. But first, I intended to marinate in these final, delicious vestiges of closure and vengeance fulfilled. With Dane and Brielle finally excised from my life like the cancer they were, I mukmu reveled in my newfound freedom and success. The ill-gotten proceeds seized during my vengeful retaliation provided a tidy sum I reinvested into my passions. I can't thank you enough for this incredible opportunity, Jennifer, a young STEM graduate, gushed as we toured the brand new computer lab her scholarship helped fund. Your program is going to empower so many underprivileged girls to break into the tech field. I smiled, feeling a surge of pride. The Alara Benson Foundation is my way of ensuring other talented women never have to compromise their integrity or dreams due to financial insecurity or toxic personal influences. Jennifer's eyes shone with earnest appreciation. You're an inspiration, showing us all how to overcome adversity with grace and strength. If only she knew the full, sordid tale of the personal betrayals that catalyzed my journey to this metamorphosis. As if reading my mind, 
Diane caught my eye from across the room and discreetly held up her tablet displaying a news alert. Tech millionaire mogul's ex-husband receives 10-year prison sentence for fraud and embezzlement convictions. Daughter indicted as accomplice. Underneath displayed grim mugshot photos of Dane and Brielle in orange jumpsuits, postures already wilting under the weight of their ruination, my revenge had wrought. The kiss-off to that poisoned chapter of my life at last. And that's the computer engineering lab. Jennifer's voice pulled my wandering attention back to the conversational present. What else does the Foundation's campus offer? We're just getting started, but plans include a fully accredited university with residential facilities by next year. I gestured to the architectural displays illustrating the bold modern structures undergoing construction across campus, buildings designed to empower and inspire rather than confine or oppress. Brightly lit computer labs, libraries, auditoriums, and dorms dedicated solely to fostering the potential within a new generation of innovative female minds. No boardrooms or offices for corrupt male plutocrats to plot siphoning funds or exacting petty vendettas against any who resisted their exploitation. I was officially entering a new cleansed world order where merit and integrity triumphed over lies, greed, and any vestige of the dehumanizing victimization I once endured. You've given so many young women a future, Miss Benson. Jennifer placed her hand atop mine, her warm gratitude drilling straight to my core. I can't put into words how much your path has inspired me to overcome any obstacle in pursuit of my ambitions. There it was, the summation of everything I'd sacrificed and struggled for, encapsulated into those heartfelt sentiments. Not just regaining the life that had been nearly destroyed by Dane's betrayal, but transcending it to become a heroic example for others to emulate. The hurt and anger still lingered beneath the surface, but I let it be subsumed under the greater purpose I now channeled my energies towards, leveraging my skills, resources, and redemptive experience to enrich communities rather than allowing them to fester through toxic traditions or social ill ills left unaddressed. That was the essential dichotomy separating me from the petty parasites like Dane and Brielle, whose lives withered into ignominy. I created, nurtured, inspired others to ascend towards their highest potential, all while they'd tried sapping the joy and purpose from everything they touched out of insatiable narcissism and self-absorption. A shrill rapping at the window broke the tender moment between Jennifer and myself. Peering over, I saw the barrel-chested silhouette of Bulldog, my head of security, reprimanding a disheveled-looking man loitering too close to the entrance. No doubt some paparazzi vermin hoping to ambush me with probing questions about the scandal surrounding Dane's incarceration, or goad a reaction about my personal trauma for clickbait outrage. I merely scoffed without breaking stride leading Jennifer deeper into the vibrant heart of the campus, where my true life's work carried onward undiminished. Those cretins and bottom feeders were welcome to bask in the salacious periphery all they wanted. I'd well transcended the need for outer validation or acceptance from such an inconsequential tribe. Striding down the pristine footpaths amidst gurgling fountains and manicured shrubbery, sculpted into a spirit of rebirth and limitless potential, I breathed in the crisp air brimming with the sense of possibility and long-overdue redemption. The pendulum of karma had at last found its equilibrium, delivering a harsh re-education to the wicked, while elevating the righteous to their proper ascendant role as vanguards against the poisons of society. Justice, hope, and optimism reigned in this brave new world I'd forged from the ashes of deception, and I was only just getting started.